Welcome to the Oso oh Spurs podcast, where today we have Sai with us. How are you, mate? Hello, mate. Yeah, really good. Thank you. Good. And we have Deej. How are you, mate? Doing good. Doing good. <laughs> good to have you both. And later on in the episode, we will have a Nottingham Forest fan joining us from a, uh, another podcast who's going to help us preview the game. Um, but before we do that, we thought we'd jump in by starting with some of your questions that you sent in to our previous episodes and for this episode as well. So, um, should we start with Good Evans guy who who sent a message on X, which was, did Richie only score his goal against Newcastle because of his terrible second touch? <laughs> Seems a little bit harsh, but but go on, Sai, you can answer it first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, well, as we were saying just before on the on, on the uh, on, on the lead up to the pod off off air. Um, He's got a bit of form for a poor first touch in terms of a, a decent goal in it because his goal in the World Cup when he uh, scored his wonder goal, it was a bit of a mistouch for the first one that set himself up. I don't know. I think that's a bit harsh. I think that uh, yeah, he did really well with the uh, with the ball that came over from. I'm, I, I assume we're talking about the Porro one where it came where it came from deep and uh, <clears throat> yeah yeah. And there's been a lot of talk about him miscontrolling it. I'm not sure. I mean, I think he did well to get it under mm-hmm. any sort of control before he finished. So. Uh, no, I'm going to go with no. <laughs> I thought I thought the touch wasn't that bad at all. I mean, he didn't bring it directly under his feet, but he kept it more or less in line with his velocity. He took it away from any defender and provided him with a, a decent angle to shoot. I don't know what more you can ask yeah. for for a first touch. Yeah. I mean, he's not yeah. like if it's Kane, he probably brings it down directly into his feet and then smashes it top bins. But we've yeah, known yeah. for several yeah. seasons now that Richarlison is not Harry Kane. So it's yeah. not a perfect touch, but I don't think it's a bad touch by any means. A bad yeah. touch would have taken it directly into the defender, like he was doing earlier yeah, in the yeah. season. Yeah, and we're quite balanced on this because we've uh, we've been critics of uh, Richie at, at times throughout the season, right? And uh, uh, so, uh, no, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. All right. So the answer to that question, um, Good Evans, is no. He would. It was a. It was a <laughs> simple as based, that. <laughs> based on three fellas sat in a room on a webcam. Yeah, so the experts have spoken, but send us a question in on the next episode. Um, next is from Vaz, the Spurs guy who listens on YouTube. And this is a really good one, actually. When Benton Kerr comes back, who is dropped? Go on, Si, I'll start with you. It's a tough one. I, I don't know. I'm not sure that it's a case of when he's back, you, you drop somebody and they stay dropped. I think it then gives a rotation options in the middle of the park. Um I guess then you rotate between Bissar and Benton Core and it gives you more depth there. It gives you more depth, especially next season. If we're, you know, likely going to get some sort of European competition, even if it's not Champions League with Man United going out bottom of their group, they haven't helped the coefficient, have they? We've dropped down the coefficient <laughs> rankings in, in Europe this week. Um, but I, I think it just gives you the option. It gives you more flexibility in the middle of the park. It gives you a chance to rotate. It gives you a chance to, to refresh the squad. So I don't think it's one or the other. I think it, it just gives you more options. Okay. Deej, do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think it kind of depends on the opposition we're playing against. I think in teams that play lower blocks, I think someone like Basuma is a bit more, not redundant, but... His, his skill set can't be used as well when we're playing against someone with a low block because his passing range isn't as good as someone like Benton Kerr. So that's a game where I could see a Sar Benton Kerr midfield two behind a Madison or a Kulisevsky or you know whoever we put there because yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah and then other games maybe it's a Sar Basuma. Other games it's Sar Benton Kerr. Other game I don't know. It can be, I think any any combination of the three can work. And I think that's really exciting. Yeah. And as those watching on YouTube will see, Christian's just joined. Hi, Christian. How are you doing? Hello, mate. Thanks for joining us again. Oh, your mic's not there. But um, if those who listened uh, before, Hello. Christian helped us. Hey, mate. Christian helped us scout Brennan Johnson. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in in the, one of the previous episodes and get us a flavor for him. And we'll probably have some more questions for you on him later because he's just starting last game we've just started to find a bit of rhythm um but we're just going to quickly before we move on to that and and preview again just finish the last with two more questions from listeners we just had to quickly uh answer the first one should be quite quick it's from jelly bean it says where is si well he's right there he's back Um, i'm back jelly bean i'm back baby (laughs) there he is he's back and the last one was from brenton jc on youtube um and actually this this leads quite nicely into today's fixture because it's a question a lot of people are wondering is given how Sun played on the left wing against Newcastle, if he's fit, there's rumours he might be injured. Let's hope not. 
does he start on the left wing again with Richarlison up front? Or do we keep him as a number nine? Now, Deej is nodding there, so I assume you have an answer right away there, Deej. <laughs> yes. I mean, as like I think I said in the last podcast, he is both, I think, our best nine and our best left winger at this moment because he is the only player that we have fit who is willing to take the ball to the byline, put a ball in, and that is invaluable in a system like Anja's. So I think that because the his his distance to the next winger in terms of what he needs to do for Anja's system is farther than his distance from Richarlison from being a nine. Yeah. Um I think he's better at both, but I think that the need is more there for being in that left winger role. So I think until January, I think that he that is the position he should play. I do think it is also easier to improve left wing son than striker son. So that's why, once again, I feel like we should go for a left winger in the January market. All right, look at that. So the karate kid, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I would. I would agree. And also, I I don't think you can drop Richie from after a performance like that. You've got to you've got to give him a run of games. You've got to give him a chance. He's starting to get a bit of confidence back. Um, he looked really sharp the other night and uh, you've got to keep him there. And um, I think that moving forwards, though, again, it gives Ange options, right? Yeah, it does. And I think in summary, I, I completely agree with you, boys. You can't have a have a player who's come back, looks on great form and just drop them, um, especially when Sonny had such a great game on the left as well. And it looks like he's got his pace back and, and just looking on fire on that position. So, mm-hmm. but, but welcome, Christian. Thanks for coming back on. Um, it's good to have you back. Appreciate you helping us preview the game today. Um, Christian, should we start with you, actually? It'd be good to hear how you're Hello. finding your Premier League. Oh, yeah. Good Sorry, to hear how you're this, finding this the Premier League this year. Like not very responsive. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, it's, it's a bit of a lag, isn't it, on the, on the yeah. mute button? But, <laughs> how am I finding the yeah, Premier League how, this year? Um, yeah, how are you finding it and how's the season going for you guys? Uh, a bit brutal. I think that's probably the most honest phrase, <laughs> a bit brutal. We started off very well. But obviously, you know, we we beat Sheffield United and then we beat Chelsea soon after that. And it looked like, oh, you know, Forrest have made some serious strides. We look a bit more like where we want to be, which is probably around this sort of, you know, ideally in that sort of pack chase, like in, with Palace, Wolves, Fulham, uh, Brentford, I suppose you could add to that, all chasing sort of top 10, if you like. And um, yeah, things are looking pretty good. And since then, it's not been good at all. And um, yeah, in fact, uh, there are some very alarming statistics. Uh, obviously, it was now one win in 12 for Forest, which bizarrely came against Aston Villa, who look like they're going to run away with the Premier League, if you believe certain reports. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is the way the typical Forest thing imaginable. And yeah, it's uh, there have been times where I would say that we've not got what our performances have warranted. For example, we deserve something at West Ham. We didn't get that. Um, but it's mainly been individual mistakes that have been our shortfall, really. And, um, yeah, it's looking a bit bleak at the minute. I mean, we're only one point better off than we were this time last year, and last year was not good. So, it's, uh, yeah. Well, we we certainly know how you feel there when you say you come away playing West Ham, deserving more. Um, yeah. We had a very similar experience very recently. But you, you mentioned you make, you've made a lot of mistakes, and mm. I'll, I'll, you boys might have questions as well. But my first question to you there would be, is that is mistakes coming from a team that press you aggressively? Or are those are they just self inflicted mistakes elsewhere on the pitch? Just self inflicted mistakes, mate. Like, I mean, if you look at um, up, up until it's weird because we're now what fifteen games in, we just give or take, yeah, um, yeah. something like that. And um, we've only been carved open once, and that was at Wolves on Saturday. Like every other goal, you can look at it from Forest perspective. Obviously, naturally, if you support the club, you look at your more critical as is. But you can just look at it, and neutral and go, hang on, like they've not had to work for these goals. Like, um, okay, so obviously you get some moments of exceptional quality. For example, we played your North London nearest and dearest and the sack of whacked whack <laughs> 30 yards out. There's not much you can do about that. But like, other than that, generally speaking, it's just been like, mostly, I mean, set pieces. We've conceded eight goals from set pieces, which is the league worst. Mm. And that's, that's exactly it. Like, yeah, I mean, like, you know, which is really frustrating. Mm. I think up until the Fulham game, We'd actually considered less goals from open players Newcastle, but so we tells you we're actually doing, we're doing something right in the middle of the pitch. We're doing like we know we, we're keeping teams out and 
the underlying data if you're into all that sort of stuff is actually pretty good from that side from a defensive standpoint but yeah it's just mistakes that no one can really account for obviously management certainly can't account for that like if you know you forget to mark someone from a corner i mean what can you do like Mm -hmm. so it's very frustrating in that regards but um yeah i mean it's it's weird you're sort of like it's frustrating because you'd rather you'd almost rather be yeah, you know, just be like ravaged and have teams just run through you and score. Because at least you can go there. And, oh, okay, the players aren't good enough. But if you're doing it on your own accord, it's sort of like yeah, that's, 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 that's really annoying. Well, I think yeah, you, you'll experience an extremely aggressive press against us, which mm. I think we'll be looking to encourage those mistakes. But but Deej or Sai, did you have any comments you want to add um, for this game? I think that this is if if what you're saying is like an accurate representation of how the game will play out. I think that this might go a lot like the Fulham game. Uh, where not for we us. Didn't necess- <laughs> I don't want to have a 5 nil, mate, if I'm being honest. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, our, our Fulham game. Our Apparently Fulham. Fulham are just the best team in the league now. I don't know oh, what's going honestly, on with no. them, but... Yeah. Was, uh, we had a preview podcast and I made a stupid comment of saying they're a one-man team, they're Palinia and Vibes, and of course they put five <laughs> past us. And they put five <laughs> past West Ham as well. So it's like, uh, like all right, okay. Hey, that Vibes player is pretty good, I, I hear. He is very good, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think it'll go pretty similar to our uh, game against Fulham, where we didn't necessarily create too much, but the press caused some... Uh, yeah defensive some breakdowns when they tried to play out of the back um as soon as their center backs had the ball we would press them and that would that led to two turnovers that turned into two goals and those were the two goals that we created so i think that if what you're saying is true then i think our press could be the difference in this game possibly but equally i don't think we'll have much of the ball Weirdly, I'm more confident about this game than would be playing someone around us, like Everton or someone like that. Because as I don't know if you saw the Aston Villa game, for example, or even most of Forest last season, whenever we won big games or competed in like against the uh, Sky Six, if you like, we more often not had about thirty percent of the ball, and we were more than happy with that. So uh, if you look at the perfect example, would be Arsenal one nil, which I'm sure was a good day. You all celebrated, obviously, the day they officially lost the league, <laughs> and um, the day obviously we we secure survival. And yeah, I think they only had like one shot on target, but had about seventy five percent of the ball. So we 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 we're very difficult to break down in that sense. So and naturally with a lot of pace. Obviously last year it was Johnson, this year it's Alanga. No, we we're, we're more than happy to just sit and just wait and then spring <laughs> on the counter, and that suits us down to the ground. So whereas some of our issues have actually come from playing, trying to actually play properly, if you like, against so where you get on the ball and you pick your opponents apart for example I mean, going back to that Arsenal game as an example they just had no space so we completely suffocated all the space in the midfield there was literally nothing between the lines so they were just passing it around just finding a red shirt no matter where they went they'd lose the ball and we pounced and that's exactly how we scored against them Gibbs White snatched it off Odegaard um, played in a one he bang 1-0 mm-hmm. so yeah that was it so it's it really depends I mean I don't think we'll be stupid enough to try and play football against Spurs in this in our current state because obviously we badly need results so it's naturally you know back to the wall let's try and play what's worked for us so if it'll be interesting to see if you do try and trigger an extreme press because there won't be much space for you to press into so that's it'll be quite fascinating to see how that transpires yeah. It'd be interesting, interesting to see because you got you, you guys got, sort of switch, switch between, between a back four and a back three, right? You don't it's you 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 you're you're a little bit um, fluid on that, mm. and it'd be interesting to see how Cooper sets up to deal with the uh, the two fullbacks. Um, well, I say fullbacks; yes. they're inverted wing backs. They're basically number tens. They? They're, they're, yeah. they, they're wherever they want to be, whenever they want to be. But the, the the point being there is it creates a lot of chaos, and therefore it creates a lot of room because they drag mm. players in and out of position a lot and they do as as much as they're good on the ball they do as much damage off the ball so it'd be really interesting to see how you guys set up to to deal with that because I think if you go with the three at the back and the five in the midfield then how does how do your two wide players deal with the uh with with certainly on the left with the doge and son as well um uh, see how it'd be interesting to see how that pans out but um they could be if you if you go to, for an ultra low block and you're right with with very little space in behind, then some of that movement is almost irrelevant in front of that low block anyway. That's it. Yeah, that's exactly how it went. Um, like I said, against Arsenal and Chelsea last season and Sevilla this season, we're like, you have the ball, fine, try and break us down. And yeah. um, 
you know, if, if, if there's no space to work into, and obviously, as you know full well, and this is where I suspect you'll probably be very much rue the absence of James Madison, for example, someone who could pick yeah. that lock. And obviously, you might have the Celso coming in, but it's not quite the same, is it? So um, it's like, yeah, it's just mm. a moment of magic or a mistake is more likely than not going to... Um, but the, the thing is, if you get one bit of choice, what comes after that? So, Yeah, I think it's going to be that the, the Kuliseski will be in that creative role probably over. So the, since the last two or three games, it's really mixed up a bit. So Kuliseski's kind of become this kind of 10 role, a creative type more more centrally on the pitch. So I think you'll see him taking on a kind of Madison-y kind of type role yeah. and he's been pretty good at it and that'll be how we'll try and pick the lock and then John, it's interesting with Johnson you'll be able to tell us a bit more about him like our experience with him have been really kind of it was a couple of really strong looking 30 minute cameos but we got red cards which resulted in him being taken off because one attribute we've noticed about him is he's not a good presser like he he kind of he doesn't contribute I did he is that mm. his first question was he like that for you but for us he's he good kind of, for us yeah he's he? um yeah, I mean, I suppose obviously it's a new, it's new methods, new everything, isn't it? Really, but yeah, I think he wasn't maybe as like relentless in pressing. It'd be like staggers. So, for example, if he went into his area, then he would press. More often than not, he'd sit and wait and like you know encourage the forwards to come onto him. Or more often than not, actually, with Johnson, he'd more sort of shuffle out wide. So he would still be within distance. But if we won the ball back, he'd be ready to spring on a counter. So, but when it came to pressing, yeah, generally speaking, Johnson was pretty good. Like, if you look at, especially, I mean, obviously it's a smaller sample size, really. But when we got promoted again, like whenever we whenever we needed him to press, he did. He was very aggressive in that. In fact, we won quite a few goals from when he like won the, when we won the ball high at the pitch, and he was in a position to be there to do so. So, yeah, it's a bit surprising that he's maybe not quite adapted yet. But then, you know, new players take time to bed in, don't they? They don't. We don't always get someone who comes in like. It hits the proverbial ground running, for example. No, that's true. And and right wing was his predominant predominant position, right as well. Yeah. We often debate if he should be a right left or or what. Definitely, um, right. Definitely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And sort of likes the opposite flank, doesn't he? Because he, you know, Decky's got a strong left foot, and he plays him on the right. He like he <clears> likes <throat> them cutting back inside to play across across mm. the box. We haven't. We haven't been well. We stuck quite a few crosses in against West Ham until Richie came on, and then we stuck one cross into the box after our best header of the ball came on the pitch, which was a was a little bit of a mystery to, to those of uh, us that were there. Um, very similar that we do, we do we do that with Chris Wood all the time. We'll swing crosses into the box for no one, and he comes on our best header of the ball and just ignore it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's so frustrating as a fan, and it's like I'm glad it ain't just us. <laughs> speaking speaking of. Headers of the ball and uh, strikers more particularly. I didn't realize that um, Awoniyi was out until February. How has that like affected y'all in terms of attacking output? Um, it's completely <laughs> ruined us. Uh, I think <laughs> to put it mildly, um, I think um, we were having a chat in like obviously our podcast earlier, just having a little group chat, and one of our mates hit the nail on the head. He said that with Awoni in the team, we're a decent Premier League side. Like we attack well, we defend well, we move the ball well, and you know we have patterns of play that you can see on the pitch, and you think, okay, yeah, they look like they know what they're doing. Without him, we just fall to bits. Like I, I, I think it's ridiculous, really, how like I mean, I, I sort of caught the back end of your sort of you talking about Sun and how how you've got like in terms of uh, your wingers, you've got a massive gap between him and the next left winger, if you like. So you've got like him up here, and then someone's all the way down here. That's pretty much us, but lower. And, you know, without Taiwo, it's, 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 it's bad. So um, that's why, you know, we're a bit tetchy at the minute because there's no doubt had he been fully fit for some of these games recently, we'd probably win them. It's probably not as bad, you know. So it's, um, yeah, a huge, huge blow. And it was also avoidable as well, which is really frustrating. Like, um, we sort of bandaged him up to play against West Ham. He gave us an hour and scored. And then even despite the fact that like we knew he was injured we knew Nigeria knew he was injured but it took him anyway he played a pointless friendly aggravated it and now he's out for three months so it's like great um so yeah so a bit, bit bleak on that front but yeah it, it's a night and day transformation with and without Taiwo um so yeah 
It's also a question. It's not just the Tottenham medical staff is what no. I'm gathering yeah. from this. We're, we've been in similar situations. We have that with Sun, by the way, that no matter, he could be on crutches and South Korea would still stop playing for 90 yeah. minutes and he would insist yeah. on playing as well because he loves playing for his country. And it's just... It's difficult, yeah. isn't it? It's sort of like, yeah. where do you stand with it? Do you tell a player, you no, know, you can't go? Or do you sort of leave but, it for them to sort of manage when, them carefully? Mm. Yeah. And when you're the size of personality and celebrity that Sun is in South Korea, you, you listen to some of the players, and when they when they were on the tour, the, you've got no idea how big oh, he is. Of course, yeah, there. he's like Beckham. I mean, he's just like, the, he's yeah. he's just like 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 Messiah. You know, he's just that everywhere he goes, there's crowds following him about. It's uh, so, and he feels a responsibility for that, right? As as you would. Of course, yeah. But this is this is this is, this is why it's so difficult because I mean, like, but it, it, realistically, for you know any footballer really, unless you support that club, realistically, you're you, it's like you, it's like anyone with work, isn't it? You work for that employer, but when it's your country, it's completely different. You know, you should have pride to play for your country. I'm not saying you shouldn't if you work, of course, but it's a different level of pride, isn't it? An emotion that takes over. So you actually you want to go. So it's um that's why it's very difficult to say no, you can't, and that, obviously we didn't, and. Even despite yeah. the fact Nigeria have Boniface and Osim Hen. Yeah, it's oh, very annoying, very sore. Frustrating. <laughs> very upsetting. But yeah. Jim, you want to take your mute off, mate? <laughs> Go. Sorry, yeah, but it does look like um, <laughs> despite the you can't have a go at the guest and then just do it yourself, <laughs> yeah. mate. Yeah, yeah trying to in spirit. <laughs> d- 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 despite your disp- <laughs> hello, Johnny. <laughs> Yeah, I've taken his mantle. Johnny's been perfect on the tech lately, and I've completely, yes, completely folded, him. haven't I? Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it looks like you guys, you're still kind of above the relegation zone despite this this barren run. Um, mm. we're, we're just coming off the back of the end of an end of a kind of five games about a win. We, we've picked up a win finally, and we're hoping to see some of those mistakes from you um, <laughs> on, on Friday night for sure. We, we we just have to keep this run going as, as Spurs go, going through this injury crisis at the moment. Um, it's it's been really really tough few weeks for us, um, but uh, yeah, that's that was it. Really, my question: yeah. Do you want to go into preview of like score just, predictions? Just a quick, but, just oh, just a quick one for Christian Jimmy Fessel, right? So yeah, go for there's it. a lot of noise. There's a lot of noise mm. about your manager and that he's under pressure. What's the feeling amongst the fans? Because the noise is in the press. You listen to the fans at the ground, and you know Cooper's name still sung. Loud and proud from the sounds of it. What's what's the is is the tide turning? Is it is there some doubts creeping in? It's I suppose like I still think I would say ninety five percent of the fan base is firmly behind them. I mean, take for example, I was I was at the Fulham game last Wednesday, and um, which was probably the worst performance. I mean, I, I was saying on our podcast that like, I've seen Forest lose some shocking games. Like I've seen us lose three 0 at Gillingham. I've seen us lose three two at Walsall. I've seen us lose three 0 at home at Plymouth this season. We're going to to League One, and that was the worst of a lot on uh, Wednesday. Because I mean, like I've, I've always said that like, you can accept losing a game to a better team. Like I, I was at six 0 at City last season as well. You go, you can sort of put it down to being naive and a lack of quality. But what you can't forgive is a lack of effort. And yeah. after half an hour, we just caved. Like as soon as that goal went in, we went, "All right, that's it, game over," and just completely folded. So, um, and it was just embarrassing. And that was when the, the real worry was set in. So it was like, okay, has he lost the dressing room now? Because that's really concerning for that mm. level of performance to happen. But I mean, none, none of the fans left early, even though we were getting tongs. We all stayed at the end. We all said we were. It's probably as much us saying goodbye as anything else. And thank you, but. No, I mean, never, I think if you ask any Forest fan, they will all want Steve Cooper to succeed at the club. They will, they will be, most of them will gladly give him as much time as he needs. Unfortunately, football doesn't work that way. And yeah. obviously the worry is that our owner does pull the trigger. And to be honest, if he does, it's sort of like you can't have many complaints. It's one win in 12 now. Obviously, we're five points off the relegation zone. It's not really what we set out to do. I mean... They had mm. hopes of top 10 this season, and that's why we signed people like Ibrahim Sangare, for example, with the notion, and Callum, Callum hudson Doy with the notion of becoming a more established Premier League club. So from that aspect, no, not good. Um, but equally, I think the ownership are very aware of how popular he is. Um, I think we all wanted, desperately, even more so for Cooper, like 
even after leaving that Fulham game, I wasn't so sort of upset that we'd lost 5-0. I was upset that we could potentially have lost the manager, like someone who's... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know you probably had it with Poch, where he doesn't just become the manager of a football club. He's, like, ingrained in the community. Mm. Like, I don't know, obviously, you saw there was um, you know, some very tragic killings in Nottingham um, over the start of the season, around that sort of time. Cooper reached out to their family. You know, it's things like that. He becomes, right. in, like, really embedded in the fabric. Like, all the clothes he wears is from Nottingham designers. Paul Smith, innit? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> you know, he um he's fully immersed himself into the club, the culture, everything. Like, you know, he's even even when we got promoted, like he was getting um the Miracle Men's, so obviously the European Cup winning squads. They were coming down to the training ground and sharing their experiences of what it means to play for Forest, etc. Like he really gets it. He gets us. And I think it that's seems why like we're a genuine guy. Yeah, it seems that's like a yeah. really genuine guy. Yeah, Although and someone that's so desperate for it to work. So Yeah, yeah. Someone keeps putting him in a headlock, though. I'm, I'm yeah, something. This, this is it. Yeah, <laughs> but but equally, you could argue he's putting himself in a headlock by some of yeah. the things he does. And yeah. um, you know, the amount of times we've said in the podcast, like, "Come on, Steve, help yourself. Don't, don't, you know." But um, I think he's starting to. I mean, obviously, he was very yeah. bold making seven changes against Wolves. Um, but they clearly showed that they're fighting for him. That they want him to stay. The players <clears> and. You know, it's it'll be interesting to see hopefully how we carry on from this. But yeah, the dream is well, ho- we keep Cooper uh, and yeah, be fine. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, you have one more one more bad defeat this season on Friday, and then you are <laughs> flying for the rest of the season, and you get top 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 uh, top ten like you're aiming for. Um, but uh, yeah, the Friday I kind of love and hate the Fridays kickoffs because mm. if you win, it's so good. Or just to go into that weekend and just know someone else around you is going to drop points and you can savor it. But when you lose, it's just like oh god, an extra two days. <laughs> I've got to wait until we can pick up and go again. But um, shout out to the Nottingham um, Forest fans actually because they've put a bit of a tribute together for um, a Spurs fan, which is really nice of them. I saw as a community um, who passed away recently. But um, they're going to try put a bit of an applause together on the sixth minute for Kiel. Um, well, that's his favourite number, and there's it's on our Twitter page. If you want to have a look for the for the details on the guy who's passed away? But it's a nice trip. He lived in Nottingham and um, appears to unexpectedly gone quite soon. So yeah, nice trip. So thanks to Notts fans for that. Um, should we go into some score predictions? Should we guys up for that? Dean, sure. are you thinking of something else? Something else in your I mind? Will, I will. I uh... will. I think that we will probably not score as much as we would like to, mostly because I think that the low block is still something that we're going to struggle with, especially until we get a 1v1 uh, winger on the left. Um, Because as good as Sun is, I think, once again, he was made to look better by the presence of of Trippier and his defensive prowess. (laughs) (laughs) um yeah so i think that i think it'll probably be i I think i think it'll probably play out pretty similar to fulham i think that we i think that even though nottingham may not have as much of the ball i think that our press will probably create a goal scoring opportunity or two i think we take one of those and then we probably score off a set piece because apparently apparently nottingham forest aren't 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 good at those so uh with with delivers like uh with like Poro, I think that and Sun, I think that we'll be able to get maybe one from there. So I think a two 0 win. Yeah. Not necessarily the the runaway that some people might be hoping for after Newcastle, but you know, Newcastle or Nottingham's a solid team despite their form, and I think a two 0 win is nothing to nothing to be ashamed of. Should we go, Christian? We'll go have you next. Then we'll we'll put our two cents in as Si and me. What do you think uh. score wise? It's it's what's it? It's um, I mean, uh, Doctor Tottenham versus Charity FC. So it'd be quite an interesting one. That goes. <laughs> but, um, I it's, I'm sort of torn. I I said on our preview it'd be a two draw, um, because uh, I don't know. I think that was before I sort of fully immersed with what happened last weekend. I was away, so I saw the highlights afterwards and that sort of thing. But um, I. I fancy for us to beat any team from any country in any league at the city grounds. I will always be confident we can do something at home. And, you know, we proved that last season. We beat Liverpool, uh, drew with Man City, obviously beaten Villa this season at home. Uh, you think, you know, obviously we're very narrowly. Uh, Newcastle need a 96 minute penalty to beat us. I know you obviously you beat us early doors before we started getting a team gelled and ready. We beat Arsenal, um, drew with Chelsea. We should have won that game as well. 
that was a Johnson howler in that game that cost us the three points that day, ironically enough. Um, but yeah, I so I I do think we'll cause some problems. I I know obviously in recent weeks you've like uh, you just alluded to there, you've sort of struggled against the low block a bit. We'll probably go over five three two. Be quite fluid. We'll look to exploit that high line with a lot of pace, and we have that in abundance, especially of Langer plays. And obviously, you know, if you doggy or Poro go missing by coming inside, and the ball's quickly worked out wide, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Um, that's not me being arrogant. That's just how it matters because Langer will time his run, and I think he's just as fast as Johnson in terms of the speeds, like rankings. So if he gets a chance, he'll go. Um, his end product maybe is quite as good, but <laughs> we'll see. Um, so yeah, I think we can cause you problems even without a striker. Um, so yeah, I, I, but equally, I can't see us conceding. Uh, sorry, keeping a clean sheet, I, I really can't. So, uh, but I think it's it's weird. Like if we got a draw, a two all, like I, I'm predicting, on the face of it, it's not a bad result at all for us. Um, just like the draw at Wolves wasn't a bad result, but we're kind of in a boat where we need wins. So we'll see if that's enough or not. But yeah, I'm gonna go for a two all draw. Stim, so what about you? I don't. It's, it's a really difficult one to call because if that low block works, then it's a frustrating day, and it could be nicked by one goal either side. I think it could. But I, I can't see us keeping a clean sheet either. We, we're not particularly good at that this season. Is keeping is keeping the clean sheet. But if we can nick one early doors, that means that they, they, they're going to have to open up. They're going to have to come on at some point, and it will leave some space for us to exploit. And I think with Sar and Basuma, certainly with Sar back in the side. It changes that dynamic in the middle of the park with us. And you saw it against Newcastle that actually, to your point, Christian, when some of the, some of the uh, gaps appear, when the, when the, when the fullbacks go, Saar is so good at covering. And there was that covering tackle that he made um, against Newcastle when Poro was left upfield that was just phenomenal. So I think, I think we will nick an early goal. Um, and then I think we'll go on and win it 3-1. I think that we'll go, it will be tight right until 90 plus 1-2 and we'll nick, a, we'll nick an extra goal in the, in the last few minutes when you're coming on to us. There you go. Um, so I think that's, that's confidence, I, I'd say. That's confident. I, I, I go it always, there's this, <laughs> I have no statistics to back this up beyond it feels like i'll every, say it anyway i'll say it anyway this is a trust me bro statistic <laughs> whenever you have a great result it's typically followed by a complacent 45 minutes of football that you and i remember this i think it was a couple a few years back when we played everton and we smashed them like by by five goals and we rocked up to the next game against someone in the bottom half and we got walloped in the first half but i kind of feel go, we're gonna go into that newcastle game after after winning that Newcastle game, feeling like, oh, all our flaws and all our problems have melted away. We've just turned this magic corner. When in reality is, we still do have a makeshift defence at the moment and a makeshift midfield at the moment. And Forrest are no mugs at all. So I, I'm going to go yeah, yeah. for this being uh, 45 minutes where we go 1-0 down. Ange being absolutely fuming with the players and Forrest gifting us away back into the game with a mistake getting us back to one all and Johnson then it score, being yeah. Johnson <laughs> yeah. Johnson to to tap in this chaos in the box or one of your players just has to kick it out but they for some reason decide to pass it straight to Johnson who taps it in and then we go right we're in and our tails go up and we find that late winner um to get it over the line 2-1 but I think it's going to be a really tight game and I would not okay. like I, if if we drew, I wouldn't go out of that thinking, oh, we dropped two points. I'd go thinking, could have won it, but that was a tough place to go, and maybe a point is is yeah. too bad. Can I come out of that? Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, up the Spurs, and I can't say up the Forest. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> on you Spurs. But after come on, you Spurs. <laughs> on you Spurs. And thanks for joining again, Christian. Oh, and if no you're still worries. listening, actually, remember. 82% of you tune in, don't subscribe on YouTube. So What's the matter with subscribe. you? Exactly. And if Get you clicking. Listen, if you listen on YouTube, we also do the audio only version on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. So we're everywhere, Jim. We're, we're everywhere. everywhere. We're on Twitter. Like we're on everything. Yeah, yeah. So go check <laughs> us out. Cheers, everyone. Catch you next time. See you later.